Dealing with categorical data is a practical machine learning problem. And in this video, we'll go over some common practice to deal with categorical data. In this video, we'll go over what are categorical data, how to encode ordinal features and class labels, and how to encode nominal features. We'll cover three common practice, one hot encoding, dummy encoding, and feature hashing. Because this is such a practical topic, there are some interview questions around it. Here are some example questions. How to deal with categorical variables? What's the difference when treating a variable as a dummy variable versus non-dummy? How to deal with categorical features when the number of levels is very large, meaning high cardinality? The content of this video will help you answer all these interview questions. Now let's start with understanding what is categorical data. Categorical data indicates the types of data which may be divided into groups and the groups may or may not have a specific order. For example, gender, ethnicity, age groups, or a choice of preference. To make sure our learning algorithms interpret categorical features correctly, we typically need to convert categorical string values into integers. There are only very few algorithms, such as decision trees, can take categorical features without encoding them. There are typically two types of categorical features, ordinal and nominal features. Ordinal features are categorical values that can be ordered or sorted. For example, the size of a t-shirt, L, large, is larger than M, medium, is larger than S, small. Nominal features, on the other hand, don't imply any order. For example, color, right? There are different colors and there's no order within the groups. Other than categorical features, we also have class labels for classification tasks, and that's a dependent variable of a classification problem. Class labels are non ordinal There's no particular order of those labels. It's a good practice to provide class labels as integer arrays to avoid some technical glitches. So when we say encoding categorical data, we need to make sure we encode ordinal and nominal features as well as class labels. Now let's go over the first method to encode ordinal features and class labels. Typically, we define a mapping to map strings to numbers, and we start with integer 1. Here's an example showing four different users and their ratings on a particular movie. As you can see, there are three different ratings from poor to fair to good. And we can create a mapping to map these string values to integers from 1 to 3. We can encode this ordinal feature rating to a numerical feature. And poor will map to 1, fair will map to 2, and good will be 3. The benefit of using this mapping is that it doesn't increase dimensionality of the data. We only create a new feature based on the original feature. The downside is that creating a mapping will impose an artificial order. So it only works for ordinal features or class labels. For ordinal features, we mentioned that those values can be ordered or sorted. And for class labels, this is a common practice to map strings to numbers without adding too much complexity. Now let's go over how to deal with nominal features. There are three common practice to encode nominal features. The first one is called one-hot encoding. So we basically transform a categorical feature into several binary features with each level in a category turns into a new feature. For example, if we have three categories, we will create three new feature columns. For the new feature vector, only the one that gets chosen will have a value of one and the rest will be set to zero. So here's an example. Let's say we have four users with different preferences on color. When we use the one hot encoding, we create three new columns because the cardinality of the column is three. They are red, green and blue colors. The value of a column is 1 if the user chooses a particular color, and it's 0 if the user does not choose that color. The number of new features is the same as the cardinality of the original feature. The benefit of using one hot encoding is that it's easy to examine how each level of a category contributes to predictions. The downside is also obvious. We increase the dimensionality of feature vectors. In this example, we create three new features because there are three colors. Now, if we have a hundred colors, then we will create a hundred new columns. One-hot encoding also introduces 
multicollinearity, which can be an issue for certain algorithms, algorithms that require metric inversion. If features are highly correlated, matrices are computationally difficult to invert, which can lead to numerically unstable estimates. So that's the downside of using one-hot encoding. It introduces multicollinearity, which may cause inference and parameter estimates being inaccurate. To deal with the multicollinearity problem, we can use another encoding method, which is the dummy encoding. We remove one feature column from the one-hot encoded array. In this way, we do not lose any important information by removing a feature column. So using the same example, instead of creating three new columns, we only have two. Similarly, if a user chooses a particular color, that corresponding column will have value one. The other columns will have value zero. The number of new features will be the same as the cardinality of the original feature minus one because we remove one feature column from the one called encoding arrays. The benefit of dummy encoding is that it avoids collinearity of the features. But the downside is also obvious. It increases the dimensionality of feature vectors. Even though it creates one less column compared with one hot encoding, it still creates many columns if the cardinality of the feature is high. There are some potential problems of both methods. Both of them require us to know the vocabulary of the categorical feature beforehand. It means that we need to know all the possible values of a categorical feature in order to use the one hot or dummy encoding to create new feature columns. In practice, that might be an issue. What if the vocabulary from the training data is incomplete? What if there are new categories get added to the data? We are dealing with code start problems. Then the model will not be able to make predictions for such new data. And what if some categorical features have very high cardinality, thousands to millions of unique values, that means we need to create thousands to millions of new features. Then the model will take up a large amount of storage space and grow in size as the training set grows. To deal with these potential issues using one-hot or dummy encoding, there's a widely used method, which is called feature hashing or hashing trick to encode large-scale categorical features. This is especially helpful in continual learning settings where the model learns from incoming data in production. You can go over the Wikipedia page to learn more about this particular method. But the general idea is to use a deterministic, no random seeds, and portable. The same algorithm can be used for both training and serving hash function to generate a hashed value of each category. The hashed value will become the index of that category. Here's an example of feature hashing. We have a categorical feature called departure airport, and we're using three different hash functions to encode that feature. As you can see, different hash functions generate different hash values, but they are all able to convert string values to integers. There are some benefits of using the hashing trick. First of all, we can choose the number of encoded values for a feature in advance without having to know how many categories there will be. This will be helpful to deal with situations that there are new categories that are not in the training data. Also, using this method will not increase the dimensionality of the data. It's very practical for categorical features have high cardinality. A potential problem using the hashing trick is collision. It's a situation that two distinct categories being assigned the same hash code. Then our model accuracy will be compromised because the model will treat different categories as the same. Looking at our early example, using this hash 10 as an example, we can see that different strings SJU and MSY both are mapped to 1, and PVD and MHT are mapped to 7. So this is an example of collision. So even if the hashing trick is a powerful method to deal with large-scale categorical features, we don't want to use it if you know the vocabulary beforehand, if the vocabulary size is relatively small, and if code start is not a concern.